Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, this hour. We thank you for every song, every prayer, pray, church covenant. We just thank you, Lord God, that you blessed us all today. And right now, Lord God, as it is time for the Word of God, as the Word of God goes forth, we have educated, illuminated, changed lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch a heart today that is in need of a blessing. Be a reminder today, Lord God, that in all things we need to thank you. And we thank you for everything you've done, everything you're going to do. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Go with me if you will to Matthew 21. Matthew 21. We will begin at the sixth verse, Matthew 21 and 6. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their clothes on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their clothes on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hmm. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go down to the 15th verse. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the Son of David, they became angry and said to him, Do you hear what these people are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you ever read out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies? You have prepared praise for yourself so far the scriptures. Question. Where is the love? Where is the love? The book of Matthew tells the story of the kingly Messiah. It was written primarily to the Jews and tells the hearers of the Old Testament prophecies that were fulfilled through Jesus Christ. In our text, Jesus tells the disciples to find the donkey and colt tied together, untie them, and bring them to him. He also told them if any man should interfere, tell them that the Lord has need of them and there will be no problem. What Jesus said and the completion of these tasks were fulfilling prophecies in Isaiah 62 and 11 and Zechariah 9 and 9 and revealing to the people that salvation was coming and the king was entering riding the donkey and the colt. The people responded to a king in the manner in which a king should be received. Like spreading a red carpet for the Academy Awards, for the entrance in Hollywood, the people laid down their cloaks while others spread branches, which were a sign of honor in Jesus' path. The people who were speaking were the people, most likely, who had heard the Sermon on the Mount. People who at that time were disinherited and disenfranchised. And then had become empowered by the word of Jesus when he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek. Ask the question, where is the love? But they were loved and given hope by Jesus. The 
people cried, Hosanna, which means save now. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And then he captured the imagination of the less fortunate of Jerusalem. There are times when you may feel down. There are times when you may feel like all hope is gone. And then comes a spark. And then comes a word. And then comes a telephone call. Or then, as you're reading your word, a word jumps off the page at you, letting you know that your living is not in vain. That that word, that that phone call came directly to you at the time you needed it to let you know that God was with you. Hosanna! Blessed! The chief priests and the scribes heard the praise that Jesus was receiving, as well as how he went into the temple and threw out the money chains and those who had sold doves. The people now loved him. There was some, there was someone actually giving back to them. Now nobody wants to keep giving when you're not going to get anything back. If you're in any you want somebody to give something back to you. You want a hug. You want a wink. You want a nod. You want a hug. Something that says, I, 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 I care about you. And this is not a one-sided thing. So Jesus had given them words of encouragement. Something that they had to because the Pharisees and those kinds of folks kept on giving, giving, giving. They weren't giving anything back. So things were changing. Something happened and someone was giving back to them and telling their oppressors what was unfair and unjust. And that God required fairness and justice. Can you feel the love? The temple of Jerusalem had been rebuilt by Herod, the great, and served multiple purposes, including a place to buy and sell animals for sacrifice. The money changers were bankers who changed foreign coins into temple currency for a fee. At the age of 20, all persons, whether rich or poor, had to pay into the sacred treasury. The money changers obviously made a lot of money and the doves were sold at many times what they were worth. Even in these days, there are, there's always somebody trying to get rich off of you, trying to sell you something at a higher value than it's worth. Even when you buy that brand new car, as soon as you drive it off the line, okay, it costs $65,000. It is no longer worth $65,000. It starts to depreciate. So here we are, paying for something that is not worth what it should be worth. Jesus throwing those individuals out angered a lot of people who made profit from selling. But Jesus believed that prayer and worship should be taking place in the temple instead of making a profit off the people. Of course, these events angered the Pharisees and the scribes due to the Roman government allowing them to practice their religion and Christ's influence and activism was threatening their operation. You start to mess with the money and then people start acting funny. We cool until you mess with my mind. We all right. We tight. Just don't mess with my mind. <laughs> Meanwhile, every time Jesus would quote scripture from the Torah to the Pharisees, 
to and put them in a place where they can no longer comment or argue due to the exposure of their false interpretations. It's just like telling a politician the law that they already know, but they want you to keep quiet about the thing you don't deserve. It'll say that in a minute. You keep voting for people who don't do anything for you. Huh? Yeah. you know. At least they will give you back something. Yeah. It's like the slave owners no longer being able to cover up the truths in the Bible because the slaves could now read. Uh -huh. Or the current understanding of the events that happened in this country that are no longer being told as one sided events. And the truths of black Americans are being revealed. Yes. Jesus' indictment of the Pharisees in Matthew 23, 13 through 33 undermines their credibility with the people. To them, he simply had to be stopped. Yeah. Where is the help? As followers of Christ, we are horrified in a, at the understanding that the Pharisees would want to kill an innocent. But Jesus understood his mission and his purpose, and every move he made was calculated in order to fulfill prophecy. His goal was to reconcile the world with God, and the blood of this innocent man had to be shed. So everybody now understands what the purpose is. And so, where is the love? You said was mine or mine till the end of time. Was it just a lie? Where is the love? Men have continued to kill what they don't understand throughout history. That's what happened to Dr. King and Malcolm X and Edgar Evers and others' names we don't give as much acknowledgement to, but at the same time they risked their lives to help others. We recently, a couple years back, celebrated or commemorated the 50th anniversary of Dr. King's speech beyond Vietnam. It is no accident as he took the courage and the call of the prophet to speak of the war that was being unjust and advocate that the money that was used to fund the war would, could help right here, help the poor, one year later, he was assassinated. Yeah. People have hidden agendas. And the purpose of their agenda will only be known when it can no longer be. So, a lot of people make deathbed confessions because what they have seen then is, I need to tell the truth. Before I die, I want to get it right. All right. And so, think about it. Don't let time go by while you're holding on to secrets. Don't let time go by doing things that you should not do and then Become unraveled like a cheap sweat. Get right with God and do it now. Stay right with God and stay right now. Where is the love? Those who wanted these men silenced and ultimately dead could not understand what drove these men to speak out against the hate violence and oppression in the world. But it was love and the desire to achieve justice for those in need. How do I know you love me? Because you don't think of the consequences in order to save my life. How do I know you love me? Because you go above and beyond to make sure that what I need is taken care of. How do I know that you love me? Well, you'll tell me the right thing and you won't hold back the truth. See, hate hides the 